morning. This is a staff announcement. It is Cholesterol Awareness Week. Have a free medical checkup in that port cabin in the car park this afternoon. Thank you. Live. You saw that programme last night on mollusks, didn't you? No. I missed it. Am oh, the only person around here that watches documentaries? I take them, but I never watch them. That's the trouble with videos. Apparently, the male limpet has got a reproductive organ six feet long, relatively speaking. All right, I was trying to think when I last had a medical. And did you know that whelks migrate? No, I didn't, Lance. You, you're fit as a butcher's dog. There you are, Clive. Hello, Peter. Have you got a moment? Yes, Peter. I want to show you something. Morning. The wonderful thing about the post office, Clive, is the way that it has maintained its progressive attitude. Morning! Do you know that by the year 2000, every household will receive at least three pieces of unsolicited mail a day? We invested and reinvested in technology. And look at the results. OCR, Clive. Optical Character Recognition. A sorting machine that actually reads the addresses. I mean, I mean can you believe that? Doing the work of eight people. I've been dreaming about an OCR for years. We've been having one or two teething problems, of course. She can't go with letters to Peterborough for some reason. Still, I am convinced that this machine will propel us into the next millennium. Look at that. Scratch on her already. Oi! Get your hands off. Sorry, Desmond. <laughs> That's Desmond. OCR's personal technician. Progress staring you in the face, that is. You see, Clive? I tell you what, let's go and have a nice cup of tea. You see, Clive, I have always believed that the way to deal with new technology is with open arms. No point in fighting it. You're right, Peter. I mean, with an OCR installed, there's no reason why we can't win Sorting Office of the Year by Christmas. That'd be wonderful. Uh, yes. <laughs> do you know, Clive, do you know what I have heard they are working on now? Virtual reality postman. The ultimate in technology without sacrificing good old-fashioned values. Ginger nut. Oh, thank you, Peter. Oh, yes. Things are definitely looking out for the post office, all right. Good. And that means good news for you, Clive. Good. You see... You don't have a driving licence, do you? Uh, no, Peter. No. Well, I'll be honest with you, Clive. Push bikes don't exactly fit in with the new technology. Leyland Daffs do. Push bikes don't. No. You see, Clive, the labour force is going to have to be completely restructured. There is no way around that. There are going to have to be some redundancies, I'm afraid. Oh, not you. We're not going to make you redundant. No need to worry about that. <laughs> no. We're going to give you early retirement. Early retirement, Peter. That is right. Oh, you're a bit overwhelmed, aren't you, Clive? Well... That'll be another bloody letter to Peterborough. Here's the culprit. It's got a paper clip in it, see? This is a sophisticated piece of machinery. It can't be dealing with paper clips. Thank <laughs> you. 
The new one-way system is a French design based on a series of interconnecting, ever-decreasing ring roads, each moving in an alternately opposite direction. Alternately opposite? Uh, yes, uh, an alternately opposite. Until one o'clock, though, we're staying with transvestites. Let's go to line one first. Okay, Sandra, what's your story? Christine! I've got something to tell you! You want to do what? I've got some news! I'll be down in a minute! He's having an affair. Well, you would, wouldn't you? some more stuff. Tell me, Lawrence, another stolen escort? Oh, I've just remembered it's Tuesday. What's wrong with Tuesday? Tuesday night is my neighbourhood watch night. Oh, God. Early retirement's the best thing that ever happened to me. You'll have time to do all sorts of things. Like what? Well, you could come out metal detecting with me for a start. I have got a field master searcher at home. That you could borrow. Nice little detector. Pre-programmed discrimination. It's a bit of a shock, you know. Been a postman 35 years. I don't know if I can just stop. Of course you can. Get yourself a nice little part-time job to keep yourself in pocket. Then you'll be sitting pretty. I could ask down Burger Boy if you want. Being a postman's what I'm good at. Postman of the year, two years running, I was. I know that, Clive. 1978 and 9. You covered this bit last week, didn't you? The mud flats are constantly moving. No patch stays the same for more than two days running. That is the joy of metal detecting, as you will soon discover. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. That's at least five years old. Now you ask Harvey Ellis, he was worried about retiring. You should see the decoy ducks he carves now. What did Christine say? I haven't told her. Got to tell her, Clive. Of course I'm going to tell her. She was up on the roof. You're a lucky man, you know. I'm only 52. I don't want to retire at 52. I meant you're lucky having Christine. Oh, yeah. You'll be able to do all sorts of things with her once you're retired. So, it's a case of keeping your eyes open, but also not over it. Sergeant Pittman is giving a talk about community policing. Right then, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, Ron. <laughs> what do you think about the over 50s martial arts course down at the college, Lawrence? Well, 
I really don't think we need worry In about... my opinion, video surveillance would be more appropriate, with the holidays coming on. Yes, yes, but how about just telling a neighbour that you're going away? Tell my neighbour you're going away and you'll have your TV set out of the front door before you get on the coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I've said all I can on this subject. Thank you, Lawrence. Sound advice, as usual. <laughs> Anyone have anything else to report before we move on to dogs fouling the footpath? I've still not found my cat. I read in the paper there are cat thieves operating in this region. They steal them for the fur. They send them abroad. There are some new people who've moved in across the road from us and they do look rather foreign. I haven't spoken to them yet, but I, I see that they have a satellite dish. And... They haven't put out any rubbish since they arrived here. I think you might check that out. Well, I'd like to say a few words on the um, Neighbourhood Watch annual outing, if I may. <sighs> Is that the time? <laughs> Will you excuse me? Um, I need to get to the laundrette. Stratford-on-Avon, I thought, this year. I read somewhere that more people get robbed visiting Stratford-on-Avon than anywhere else in Britain. I read that. I know a nice restaurant on the A34 near Banbury. And then we can catch a matinee of Richard III. Isn't Banbury the place they smash your car windows while you stop to traffic lights and steal your handbag? Is the water hot enough for my bath now, Mrs Swinger? I've brought my own towel. Of course it is, dear. From when? Friday. Three days' notice. They pay me at the end of the month, but you said I don't have to work it. Clive, can we afford this? Well, as long as you keep on working. How do you feel? Oh, you can't stand in the way of technology, Christine. You have to embrace it. You've got to be sure about it, Clive. A woman on the radio earlier blamed her eating disorder on being made redundant. I mean, what are you going to do with yourself? All sorts of things. I could help you do up the house. Well, as long as you don't start carving decoy ducks like Harvey Ellis. <laughs> Drive Sheila up the wall. I'm late. And we got our new sister on the ward. You don't have to take it, you know. You can say no. I know. I don't know about this, Ralph. You retire in the day after tomorrow. You need a job to go to. Now, let's start you off on boxes. You'll be all right on boxes. You have to flat. It's not difficult. I started out on boxes. They promoted me to cheeseburgers. Now I have to slip cheese in the bun. It's a bit fiddly, but it's not difficult either. Oh, you don't earn much, of course. You have to work out front to earn decent money. Morning, Kirsty. But they don't allow anyone over 25 to work out front. There's a different atmosphere in the back. There's a real camaraderie here. All right, then. What did the doctor say? Said it's fungal. It's Mr. Brewster, look. Morning, Mr. Brewster. What are you doing here? I just brought in my friend Clyde. Does he want a job on boxes? Only Stan didn't come in again. I reckon he's dead this time. Joking. In a few years, maybe, Peter. Listen, Clive. If you get yourself a nice little part-time job, you'll be the richest person you know. It's not the money, Peter. I don't want to stop being a postman. You just don't understand, do you? We're not having bikes anymore. Your job isn't going to exist. I do a walk. We've got all the walkers we want. I learned to drive. Be serious, Clive. I don't want to stop work. OK, OK, OK. You have it your way. If you want to keep working, you keep working. I'll give customer care a call. They'll soon fix you up. Customer care? Yes. Always a job down there for a man of your experience. You can sit in a nice warm office and deal with complaints all day. Hello, Kelvin. All right. 
I'll retire. Vikings of stature were always buried with their boats, so they could cross the river to heaven. Inside were placed objects of gold and bronze and assorted articles of war. Now, we know that Redrick was a Viking of stature. I mean, his boat would have been dripping with gold and stuff. Now, the question is, was the Viking burial ground sited on the mudflats or up where Carpet City is now? See, Clive? The secret of good metal detecting is research. Pony Express rider Bob Haslam was just past Cold Springs, Nevada when Peyote Indians ambushed him. One by one, he picked them off with his twin revolvers, but then an arrow embedded into his arm, hit the bone and lay there quivering. Bob galloped on, but another arrow tore into his cheek, knocking out five teeth and breaking his jaw. You're early. Just wanted to wish you good luck on your last day. You're right. Fine. You got bags under your eyes. Don't worry about me. program last night, didn't you? No, I didn't, Lance. Apparently, the Kalahari Bushmen have remained unchanged for over 2,000 years. What, like, totally unchanged? Totally. They have furniture. Give it to them one last time, Clive. Yeah, cheers, Clive. Yeah. Yeah. I'm retiring. This is my last day. In fact, I've been given early retirement. Mm. Anyway, I'd just like to say how much I've enjoyed being your postman. It's been a wonderful job. Mm. Thank you. Uh, sign here, please. <laughs> what? That dressing gown. You must have had it 15 years. Just caught me. Hang on. Is that a paper clip in there? Why? So what you get him? A metal detector. It was 
his wife's idea. <laughs> and the strippergram. <laughs> you probably guessed that. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. Mr. and Mrs. Flint, Rattling Farm, Gloucestershire. If this woman takes so much as her shoes off, you'll have industrial action. I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Stay calm. We can settle this. If he's not here in five minutes, it won't matter. I've got to have my kids in school for nine. Where the hell is he, anyway? low in the saddle, Clive Peacock spurred his Mustang and outpaced the Indian ponies as he rode two days and nights cross country towards Gloucestershire. Where is he? Well, I thought he was with you. Not what he's supposed to meet me up on the mud flats at two o'clock for his first metal detecting lesson. This is Peacock. Peter Robson. Personnel. Uh, is, is Clive there, is he? Uh, n n no, I'm afraid he isn't. It's just he hasn't come off his round yet. And we're getting all a little bit, you know, concerned. Well... <laughs> Maybe he just slipped in and out and no one noticed. Well, you know what Clive's like. He doesn't like a fuss. Uh, the, the, the problem is, uh, uh, Mrs Peacock, that he, uh, he hasn't brought in the eight o'clock uh, collection yet or put his keys back in, in his box. And, uh, well, the time is now um, it's almost uh, three o'clock. Um, Mrs Peacock? So you see he's, um... He's seven hours late. <laughs> and uh, the regulations, uh, I'm sorry to say, stipulate that at this juncture, with Royal Mail missing, I've got to call the uh, police. God, I hate driving in this town. Want me to take over? No. Come here, what's happening to the place? Nothing works properly anymore. I can't even trust Postman now. <laughs> Come on! Anyone sitting here? Where are you heading? Gloucestershire. Is that the B3095? You'll avoid the contraflow south of Warminster. Right. Thank you. 
Where are you headed? Blomford. There's some broken glass outside the garden centre, Pimpin. Cheers. What's your load? Royal Mail. Wait a bit. They said that electronic mail would be the death of the post office. But no. No, no. We invested and reinvested in technology. And even as we speak, I believe they are working on virtual reality postmen. Stamp. Stuck on upside down. Well, they messed up all the settings. We'll have to get the specialist in from Swindon. You see, gentlemen, the beauty of progress. A specialist from Swindon can be called in at a moment's notice. Mr Robson? What? Detective Sergeant Pittman. I phoned. Inspector? Knowing Clive, he's just gone for a wander. It was his last day. You don't go for a wander with a bag of royal mail. He could have been mugged. I reckon he was mugged. Clive wasn't the sort to get mugged. Yeah, he was the sort nothing happened to. He was the reliable sort. He loved his job. So why was he leaving? He was offered early retirement. A very attractive package. Couldn't resist it. That's interesting. What? That device for keeping your keys handy. I thought that name was familiar. Clive Peacock. He's that bloke in my neighbourhood watch. He's my neighbour. So which one does he live in? I don't know. I've never actually spoken to him. It wasn't the sort you speak to. He's just gone for a bike ride, I'm sure. It's the sort of thing he does when he's on edge. You mean he's uh, gone off like this before? Once or twice. When he's been under stress. You see, I don't think he was altogether happy about his early retirement. Where does he go? Just cycles about. When I had the miscarriage, he went off then. The problem is, Mrs Peacock, Royal Mail's gone missing and the sorting office has to treat that very seriously. Well, Clive wouldn't have taken anything. He'd be back by this evening. Did you have any problems, Mrs Peacock? Money problems? Anything like that? No. Do you know if uh, he took anything with him this morning, uh, like a change of clothes? You noticed anything of his missing? Mm, sorry. I really don't know where things are. See, Clive's the organised one. Board. Library book. I'm sure you're right, Mrs. Peacock. He'll be back by tonight. Yes. However, if for some reason he isn't, I'd like to give the Echo a call and get his picture in. It, uh, it always helps in these cases. Oh, see. Thank you, Mrs. Peacock. So let us know the minute you hear anything, won't you? Yes, of course. Oh, come on, Clive.
Hello? 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 Christine? Clive? Clive, is that you? Hello? Sorry to disturb you. You're not disturbing me, pal. I'm just watching the ice skating. I just wondered if you had a couple of spoons I could borrow. Spoons? I got a puncture. Of course you have. I've been in this business 15 years. There's good money in shoes. People always need shoes. When I started, my wife gave me six months. She said, six months you'll be back with fridges. But shoes are a lot better to work with than fridges. And the damn sight lighter for a start. That Hungarian judge never gives more than six, you know. You are right there? Fine. Here's one for you. Just say, they wanted to make a film of your life, a movie. Someone decided to make the life of Clive, right? Yeah. Who would you have play you in the main role? What actor? I don't know. Have a think. Well, maybe Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman? No, you're not him at all. He'd be miscast there, he would. You're much more Ronnie Corbett. Ronnie Corbett, he'd do the job well. He's a good little actor. You want to know who I'd have play me? Who? Clint Eastwood. What, you? Yeah. Sort of wanderer. That's me. Riding into town with my shoes and riding out again. Clint is very good at playing a normal bloke who doesn't seem like anything special on the surface. But he's got a lot more going underneath that people don't know about. That's why I'd choose Dustin Hoffman. No! Dustin Hoffman would be all wrong. What about Michael Fish? He could play you. The weatherman. If Ronnie Corbett turned you down. peeling onions. <laughs> Tea? Oh. Try not to worry yourself, Christine. He's probably just had an accident or something. He hasn't contacted me or anything. I mean, what am I supposed to think? I mean, where did he spend the night, for heaven's sake? He didn't say anything to you? No. You two know each other so well. We're mates. We don't talk much. <laughs> Ralph. Yeah? Did you and Clive ever discuss sex? No. Never. No, honest, Christine, we never did. It's just that me and Clive never hit it off in bed, you know. Oh, well, he, he, he never mentioned that to me. Sorry, 
itchy ankle. All this just feels so unreal. I mean, I could go a week without speaking or seeing Clive. There were just signs that he lived here. You know, washing up done, cottage pie in the fridge, newspapers picked up. Well, that's how I know he's not here, because the house is littered with newspapers. <laughs> I feel a bit helpless, like I'm drifting out to sea. I'm always here, Christine, if you need a lifeline. <laughs> Do you know how to cook a cottage pie? Not a clue. Strong onions, aren't they? Do you uh, want a good time, love? Just walk out to your truck and I'll be with you in a minute. I'm on my bike, actually. I hate it when they say that. Say what? Police are baffled. I'm not baffled, I'm... Watching the situation develop, aren't you, Lawrence? Exactly. Is that Palmerston Road woman still sneezing? Oh, I don't know. I heard she was going to be sponsored by Kleenex. What do you reckon Clive Peacock's doing now? I see him on his bicycle, cycling down a country lane, no traffic, jacket off, sun in his face, pork pie in his saddlebag, just following the road wherever it takes him. The sooner we bring him back home, the better, really. WPC McMahon speaking. A journalist called Sarah Seymour from the Mail. Where? The Daily Mail. She says she wants speech about our missing postman. What? Mr. Flint, Ratland Farm. Howdy, God. Thank you. Move. This is loaded. I ain't frightened to use it. You've had enough of your sort coming around here poaching. I'm not a poacher. I'm a postman. <laughs> you tell the police that. You're not Mr. Flynn, are you? <laughs> I'm warning you, this is loaded.
call it. Right on this. On what? Poacher. I'm a postman, honestly. Well, go through, make yourself at home. I'll make some tea. You're not making them a cup of tea. Call the police. You'll be in the pub by now. Is that loaded? Of course it's loaded. Well, don't point it if it's loaded, Hugh. It's bloody poacher, I'm telling you. He looks like a postman to me. I am a postman. This is Ratlin Farm, right? Yes. I've got a letter for you. There. That's the reason I'm here. I don't want your pheasant. You're in big trouble, you are. You. We got our own ways of dealing with your sort round here. Unpleasant ways. You. It's from Patricia. What? What does she say? She says she's all right. And she's got a job in boots. Oh, there's a photo. Oh, look at her. Uh. Excuse me. Do you do bed and breakfast by any chance? Night, Mr. Peacock. Good night. your shirt. Oh, thank you. Are you really a postman? Yes. to tell you he's sorry about last night. You can't be too careful. Anyway, the gun wasn't really loaded. That's all right. And he, uh, he says to give you this. The bird. Let it hang for a couple of days, then casserole it. Tell your wife. My name's Sarah Seymour. I'm a journalist with the Daily Mail. This is Dave Folds, a photographer. Morning. I wanted to phone, but... Um... You come about Clive? Yes, we have. You see, we think there's an issue here, Mrs Peacock. Are we really aware of the psychological effects on the workforce by the introduction of technology? Does early retirement undermine... The... You can come in if you give me a cigarette. <sighs> The post office should take some responsibility for Clive's disappearance. Sorry. If you really want to know, I've decided that thinking about anything is a bad idea. I'm keeping myself occupied, just... just trying to stay sane. You'll have to give it a good shove. 
not worked properly since Christmas. People send too many cards these days. Oh, letterboxes like this just can't cope. The spring seized up, that's all. I got some three and one in my saddle, right? There you are. Fixed it. It's been all go today. Had a mattress delivered this morning, and now you. This is from her sister, properly cancelling her visit. I've just read my horoscope and it said, expect good news. <laughs> What's yours? Pardon? Your star sign. Oh, uh, Leo. Leo. All attempts at communication are doomed. You will be left isolated. The odds are stacked against you, but persevere because the planetary aspects are in your favour. Lucky old you. Apple tree wick. Sounds nice. Sorry about the Daily Mail, Mrs. Peacock. It's the Echo. It likes to feed stories to the big boys. Oh, sorry about the mess. I'm, I'm distressing. Oh, there's no need to let things get you down, Mrs. Peacock. The good news is that all this national coverage has produced a number of sightings of Clive. Oh, good. Is he all right? He seems perfectly all right, Mrs. Peacock. Farmer in Gloucestershire has been in touch saying they actually put Clive up for the night. And a man near Leamington Spa called in and said he was in there yesterday. Well, what was he doing near Leamington Spa? Apparently, he delivered a letter there. He did the same at the farm in Gloucestershire. This may sound fantastic, Mrs. Peacock, but it seems that Clive is... Yes? ...delivering the mail. Oh, well... Well, that clears that up then, doesn't it? Something the matter, Lawrence? Well, what do you make of her? I mean, if I was behaving the way Clive Peacock is, I'd want my wife to do a lot more than she's doing. I suppose so. I mean, he's not really a criminal, is he? When a man does a job for 30 years and then retires and looks around and sees an empty future, he's going to say to himself, what have I done with my life? Where's it gone? What now? Now, before we move on to discuss the gypsy encampment, I'd like to confirm that the date for the outing to Stratford is September the 10th. Now, I know that's a month away, but I do need numbers now, so... Uh, just a moment, Ron. Uh, before we go any further, I've got something to say. I want to know what our feelings are on the Clive Peacock situation. Well, I'm afraid he'll have to have his name on the list by Friday or he can't come. I wasn't us. referring to the outing, Ron. I was referring to his disappearance, which should concern us all. We are his neighbours, his friends, his community. I, mean, I know this is a police matter, but it occurred to me that maybe we're the ones best equipped to reach out to him in some way. We could put photocopies of him on telegraph poles like I did for my cat. Is the water hot enough for a bath, Mrs Springer? We never had much of a sex life. We never had it off in bed. I didn't mind, but now I can't help feeling we missed out. Have you ever discussed it with him?
I wonder if one day that you say that you care. If you say you love me madly, I'll gladly be there. Like a puppet on the string. Ah! Evening. We've been talking. Aye. We reckon that you're that missing postman. Who? The missing postman, the one that's been on the telly. No, no, you're mistaken. And in the paper. It does look like me, doesn't he? Uh -huh. You're fooling no one, lad. So, what are you drinking? In the split second, the farmer was distracted. You grabbed the shotgun, right? It wasn't quite like that. And then you wrestled it out of his hand. Then made your escape, eh? Good for you. <laughs> Danny, a pint for me, a oh, pint for postman. Actually, I seem to remember it was getting dark by then. At bedtime, in fact. So, you ran out to your bike and you pedalled off into the night firing morning shots. And then you found somewhere to camp out under the stars. Fantastic. Well, the mail has to go through, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 so where are you heading next, Clive? Oh, it's all over now, I think. It's time I went home. Uh, hey, what do you mean it's all over? Well, the police want me, don't they? You're not letting that worry you, are you? Well, no. You've got to accept a little opposition, Clive. Yes, but I've stolen royal mail, see? You've stolen nothing that's not rightfully yours. Your job. And besides, you can't give up now, Clive. You've got too many people rooting for you. Oh. You're an inspiration, you are. What? An inspiration. Ah, who to? To the working man and woman, Clive, that's who. You've done what other folk only talk about doing. Well, for you, Matt, working the estate agents now. Joe and his wife, Pam, have the gourmet sandwich bar across the road. Pam's pantry. Very popular. Kevin here, he may manage the mountain bike shop and me. I have a thriving narrowboat tire business. But it wasn't long ago that we all used to work down at the rubber factory. What's now the industrial bloody heritage centre. Bastards. When we lost our jobs, we were devastated. But did we do anything about it? No. Hmm? Did we, Eck? We just accepted it. Not like you. You set an example. You've stood up for yourself. For what you know to be true. Not sure about that. Have another pint. Uh, you're the man that refused to give up his job, you are. The people's postman. That's what they'll call you. Yeah, I love. But I can't go on. I, I need to get home to my wife. Your missus can cop on her own for a oh, bit. Stop bullying him, you lot. If he wants to go home and see his wife, let him. 
I love that rustic decor in your house, by the way. Is that you or her? All her. I see. She can look after herself. She's that sort. My bike's broken. Kev, what's the best bike in your shop? A giant Bronco would suit him nicely. Well, that will give him one. Vic's narrowboard tire will sponsor it. Oh, that's very kind. And you're probably getting short of funds as well. Lads. So don't tell us that it's all over, Clive Peacock. Because it's not. It's only just begun. Oh, oh, the oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Press that button there. Right. Say cheese. 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 Got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I wonder if you could post this for me, please. I don't think I can get anything else on the bike. It's my uniform. That'll cover the postage. Okay. Thank you. Alco is CU92 frame with a low chain stay design. 413 Old Crumley boxer front forks with replacement dropouts. Weighs 11.7 kilos. 24 speed Shimano XT derailers with X ray shift levers. Uh, side panions with sleeping bag, waterproof maps, spare top and bottom. Uh, letters up front. Now remember, you don't fight a bike like this, you no. give it its head. You trust it. Trust it, right. Uh, Try to maintain a riding position between yeah. 30 and 60 degrees. Right, right, you want the B616 or for Apple Tree Wick, Clive? Right, you'll be there, be teacher. No trouble. What can I say? Don't say anything. Just keep going till the bag's empty. Keep going till the bag's empty, right? Remember, for every letter you deliver, it's one in the eye for the management. One in the eye for the management. Hey, right. hey, Don't fight Clive. it. Go, oh, Clive. Oh. going on, Pittman? Well, the story seems to have caught the public imagination, sir. National Press. Six o'clock news. He'll have his own chat show and you'll still be looking for him. Well, he's proving hard to track down, sir. Sorry to interrupt, but Clive Peacock was seen last night in Skipton in a pub called The Navigation. Seems he was a bit drunk. Right. Get the local force to pick him up and you two get up there and bring him back. Yes, sir. I mean... I really don't know what the problem is. He's on a bicycle and you've got a Vauxhall Astra. Want me to drive? No. I'll talk to you. How's that? Keep you awake. Did you say you were married? <laughs> We're divorced. Two teenage boys. I'm divorced? You got a girlfriend? No. How about you? I haven't got a girlfriend. No, uh, no, um, no, I mean boyfriend, um, partner. No. Why'd you ask? No reason. Shall we see what's on the radio? I like this. Yeah! <laughs> Run in. Was he a charismatic sort of person, would you say? Right. No, it was Mr. Charisma. He was also very normal. Uh, one at lads. Oh, he, he could hold his beer. He had this underlying sadness about him. Ah, oh, he did. Vulnerability. Aye. And you could see that he had a grim determination. Very grim. He said, I'm going to deliver these letters. It's the last oh, thing. Oh, bloody shit. Yeah. Be cutting it. Danny. Danny. This is Detective Sergeant Pittman, Dorset CID. Wants to ask you a few questions about Clive Peacock. Look, I'm supposed to be having my picture taken by this bloke from the Evening Argus, and then I promised the local radio an interview. It won't take a minute. Mm, might be able to fit you in then. Am I all right sitting here? Hello. Sit wherever you like. Well, I'm only asking, you see, because the cameraman from the television, he wanted me over there by the window so he could, you know, get, get the canal in the background. But the director disagreed. He wanted me over here on a stool looking, well, you know, casual. You sit where you like, because all I want you to do is tell me what happened when you met Clive Peacock. 
Well, don't you want to know what sort of person he was? No. Whether he looked like a man on a mission? Just tell me what happened. Well, her from the Daily Mail did. Theoretically, it's treason, you know. Right. What is? Interfering with the Royal Mail. We're looking at a modern-day Dick Turpin here. See, I've made him out to be more like Robin Hood. Yeah, well, he's going to be bigger than both of them by the time it's finished. They dropped that story about the homosexual hippo at Bristol Zoo last night to make room for him. Welcome to Pam's Pantry. My name's Joe. We're having uh, name tags done soon. How may I help you? Two teas. Certainly. And uh, may I tempt you with a gourmet sandwich from our choice of 256 combinations? Be as creative as you like. I'll have cheese. Cheese. I'll have prawn and avocado, please. Wise choice. Very popular. What are you lot doing here? That's what I'd like to know. None of you cares one jot about Clive Peacock. Why do you think he's run away like this? Any ideas? clear why Clive left. There's a protest against being replaced by a machine. Miss, I know Clive Peacock. He wouldn't protest if you set fire to his trousers. Oh, come on. This is a good holiday story, you know that. The public can identify with this bloke. He's doing what we'd all like to do. Hello? Yep. Uh, yes. Hello. Clive Peacock is Hello. crying out for help. Can't you understand that? He needs support, not an audience. He's a symbol. He's a bloody postman. You lot need to remember that. You're turning him to something he's not. You're pumping him up like a balloon just so you can let him go and everyone can watch him go... <laughs> right round the room. One bottle of avocado, one cheese on the house. But uh, if you could see you were to mention in Pam's pantry in your report, I'd be ever so grateful. We're police, you blind pillock. Well, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Bollocks. That's what Pam says. seen in Apple Tree Week about half an hour ago. They took their time giving us that. Mm, they had to phone the newspapers to find out. I'll ask for backup, shall I? No, we won't need backup. She thinks you're wonderful. <laughs> Except my husband, of course. He's the managing director.
Oi, you lot, wait in your cars. I'm asking the questions this time. And if you lot set one foot on this land, I'll have you for trespass. Oh. I think you deserve this. <laughs> Thank you. The police are outside. What? Quick, this way. Oh. This way. My hat. Got it. Uh, Detective Sergeant Pittman. You spoilt my party. Get your party bag. There he is! Go straight on, sir. We can add him up on May Road. Call it a day, shall we? In the car. Right. You're going to be all right. You up! Stay back! Right, Clive. It's time to come home. Clive! Hello, sister. I, w I won't come in tonight if you don't mind. It's all getting a bit of a strain and I, I, I think I'll have an early night. Well, thanks. Yeah, bye. Postman Clive Peacock climbed back in the saddle and headed for the pass, unaware of what dangers lay ahead. All he knew was that as long as he had mail beating in his bag, he would keep on riding. postman who went missing with a bag of mail after being given early retirement appears to be delivering his letters by hand. Clive was last seen crossing the Scottish border and heading towards the west coast. The search for him is currently centred around optician shops in the area. It is believed that Clive's broken glasses are giving him problems. Today we are offering a £500 reward to anyone who has seen the missing postman. So whether you think that Clive Peacock is a lonely Luddite or a survivor striking a blow for the working man, give me a call now and It's the people's postman, isn't it? He's like Don Quixote on a bicycle. He's the man who refused to give up his job. Big sympathy riding with him. You can feel it. I'd love a letter from the missing postman. Well, I think he's off his trolley. Oh, you can't go around behaving like that. Well, he should be locked up. Christine! Christine! 
interesting, Nick. See what? He's on page five. That is the main feature page. He watched late night horror film with me, said Diane Walsh from Litchfield. He'll be on the front before this is over. I'm going to start a scrapbook. I'll tell you what, he isn't going to recognise this place when he gets home, is he? Here's a parcel for him. Well, it's from him. That's his own writing. Well, aren't you going to open it? No. Well, it feels like clothes. It's his dirty washing, I expect. Have I, uh, have I come at a bad time? I'm sorry, Ralph. I'm very grateful for you coming round, keeping me up to date. Really, I am. No trouble. It's just that... I've decided I've got to start thinking about myself a bit more in all this. Well, of course you have, Christine. I've convinced myself that Clive has gone off because he has to work some things out. And when he's done that, I'll be happy to have him back. There's nothing else I can do. You've been a tower of strength, you know, Christine. I am so impressed at the way you've kept going. Oh, it hasn't been easy. You've been a big support to me, Ralph. Someone's got to look after you. I do want you to keep on coming round. Shall I? You have reached Christine Peacock Interior Design. Unfortunately, there's no one available to take your call at the moment. But if you leave a message after the tone, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Interior Design? Hello? Is Mary there? No, she isn't. Well, who's that then? I think you've got a wrong number. Oh, I am sorry. I haven't disturbed you, have I? No, no. It's nothing important. I was just phoning for a chat. That's all right. Oh, well, better get myself to bed. Me too. Not from round here, are you? No, just passing through. On your holidays? Uh, sort of. I'm Norma, by the way. I'm Clive. I like that one foot in the grave with what's his name, but they don't make them like and they used to. Our faulty towers. <laughs> that one had me in stitches. Yeah, that too.